Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a this is a bailout. It's, it's an exemption program. God is exempting many of us from so many things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shine abani saborai Shine awan kezu chata Shine awan kezu chata Thank you for your love. We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, with what you know now, I'd like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. Did you know that there are many people just like you used to be and they are equally confident, believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them. Hallelujah. But we thank God for His grace. Galatians 6 verse 9. I want to share something very powerful. Two people, please. Mighty revelation tonight. Any two people? Just two gentlemen. Come, sir. Thank you. Please stand here. Any other person? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy, we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. 
this is the greatest in my opinion the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom because it is through this journey brothers and sisters that many fall by the wayside are you getting my point it is through this journey that many never make it there there is it's like a marathon so many people hundreds of people standing with all of their their athlete apparels but in the final analysis at the end only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line and i want us to finish strong hallelujah many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying fasting and say lord explain to me what meaneth these things what is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life what season am i in please listen tonight because god is about to speak to you galatians 6 verse 9 please read everybody one more time and let us not be weary in well-doing for in what hold on in what there is a timing in the spirit called due season for in due season not any time do not be weary in well-doing i'm building up from what i shared last week for in due season we will reap but there is a condition what is the condition if we that means if we faint what will happen although the due season will come but we will not reap. hallelujah so there are two things there there is a due season and there is a call for endurance call for strength call for continuity hallelujah one of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons there are very few messages in the body of christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life yet the bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun and that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons. Say after me, times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons. And how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth, in this realm. And that means if we do not understand spiritual timings, if we do not understand seasons, we may be equipped with the principles, but we will faint because we do not realize that God is working even at those times and seasons. So I want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight. The Bible says for us not to be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. He said for in due season we will reap last week i began to talk about how that the bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them you remember that teaching hallelujah and so that our 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 part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time the bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone so rather than sitting down and waiting, well will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness, never to come out again. If you believe it, say amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build. Number one, write this word down, waiting. W-A-I-T-I-N-G Waiting One word that gets believers scared in the kingdom Many people have preached all kinds of messages But tonight 
I want us to examine this concept. I do my best by the leadership of the Spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned. Waiting. One of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting. It can be so frustrating, it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season. Please take note of what I'm sharing. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, if there is a prophecy upon your life, hear me, between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy, a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting. And it's important I teach you how it works in the kingdom. Otherwise, when you enter that season, you may be so confused and you will abort destiny. Not knowing what is happening behind the scenes. Is somebody getting blessed already? Because many of us right now are in this phase as I speak right now. There are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused because this season rattles your convictions everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season your ideologies your beliefs your prayer life your dexterity in the spirit your endurance everything you have ever acquired through the world will come under test and if you cannot stand that test brothers and sisters you may stand from here and see Canaan, but you may never enter it. The fact that you have seen the vision, the fact that you have had the dream, is no guarantee. The fact that God spoke to you, is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. You see a lot of things in your dreams. You have seen that you are a financial apostle. You've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom. I want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles. And one of those stages is called the period of waiting. And if you do not understand this, brothers and sisters, you may never arrive there. Proverbs 13 verse 12 Proverbs 13 verse 12 Let's hurry up tonight Open your heart Hallelujah Now the Bible explains to us You see, look up please I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom But studying about man Because I'm a man and I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again one to read hope deferred makes what when you postpone hope when expectations are not met the bible says it can affect your spirit man are you reading it here the word heart there's the same word spirit when you hope for certain things by our natural design we love winning we love achieving we love accomplishing things are you getting my point we love seeing a sign of progress in our lives 
Is someone getting what I'm, sh- I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have, are not achieved when it is deferred. That means when it is postponed. The Bible says it has an effect. Not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body. It affects even your spirit man. He said, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. When you achieve your goals and you hold on to it, there is the joy that fulfillment an accomplishment brings in every man. Hallelujah. That means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long, if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process, you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out. No matter how good and godly you are, that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny. Say amen. Now, there are two dimensions to waiting and I want us to look at it. Number one is that waiting, so that we don't confuse ourselves here, waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up so that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced Because if the word of God is not rightly divided, the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say, Lord, an end comes to this. There are certain periods of waiting that are not divine. They are not initiated by God at all. Are you getting my point now? They are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny. That kind of waiting is called delay. Write it down. The name given to that kind of waiting is delay. Delay. Satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you. Paul said once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. You soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go. Oh, bless you. So you can be writing. It's very important that you write. Lamentations 3.25 Are we there? Everyone please look up and read before you continue writing. One to read. The Lord is good 
unto them that do what? Not wait on him. Wait for him. Wait for him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you. And you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah process very important you will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not is part of the things that you will find and i'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season let me give you one example remember the nation of israel hallelujah they came out there was a prophecy given to moses even moses their leader did not enter the promised land look up did you know that god never told moses he was going to die on the way is that true the prophecy that was given to moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey god never told him somebody will take off the button but between egypt brothers and sisters and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. They joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider, because it had not stretched their patience too much, but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness. Because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still. Known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there's no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom it's not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking our time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three, look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because 
we have expectations for something great about our life. We postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future so that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day when I wear my suit you will see the dance I've never danced before. I would dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point you will see the lady looking frowny, angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night, Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it let me just enter this thing and you see joyless believers angry and offended at God note this tonight that waiting should never postpone your joy you can be joyful while waiting never wait until you arrive your joy gets complete when you arrive but that joy should start and go with you all the way because the bible says the joy of the lord is the strength that you will need there is a difference between joy and happiness if i give you one million now there is every reason to be happy that's not joy hallelujah but joy is of the holy ghost is the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reasons. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? 
Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and cast out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that God works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how God makes men great. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything. joy waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing everybody say divine timing say after me there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest say one more time there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience write it down impatience what is impatience patience that has been exhausted patience that has been exhausted Tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly i i think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion one of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy africans nigerians and young people in general impatience impatience what does it mean to be impatient impatience means getting ahead of god getting ahead of god that's what it means to be impatient you run ahead of god you run ahead of his timing for your life impatience is a dangerous thing god is speaking to us tonight because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience. There are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience. Hallelujah. Very, very important. You are a young lady. You are just 21. You want to kill yourself. If I don't marry by 2014, 
let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long. The result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action get ready because an ishmael will be born you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you look at verse 11 11 and 12 let's see the tragedy of this union the product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, listen, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? 
he said this union will be a wild man his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren that means this troubler will be everywhere till today the world has not recovered from the union less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience jeopardize the generation who is about to jeopardize his destiny here there's there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience is someone getting blessed tonight the nation of israel in exodus chapter 32 when they came out of egypt moses went upon the mountain for 40 days look at me it was a waiting period is that true they didn't see any progress whereas moses was on the mountain intercussing with god so something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening brothers and sisters it looks like your life has been stagnant for years you think you are stagnant but if god should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit god is really ministering to someone tonight it's not the way you have been looking at it it's not the way you have been looking at it physically you have not been in school for three years but there is a progression the lord has been doing something the job did not come five years after graduation you are still struggling and you believe you are like every other jobless person is that true there is an investment of the spirit in you only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom the nation of israel could not wait and what did they tell aaron let's look at that verse exodus 32 very quickly is someone getting blessed impatience can jeopardize your destiny you can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through but never ever be able to cut out of your life hallelujah and they told aaron they said moses is wasting our time we don't even know whether he's dead or not please we brought gold out of the temple we remember that while we were slaves we saw the egyptians worshiping a god of gold and it was the god that brought them out oh yeah aaron come and build us this idol let's celebrate this idol we can't wait if there is god in heaven why will he keep us in the wilderness for for this long 40 days we didn't see moses he didn't tell us anything and we are waiting let us build an idol and while god was with moses advocating for the same people they were destroying their own destiny by themselves and aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings they forced aaron they forced aaron which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me verse 3 and all the people took the golden earrings they were so desperate to come out of that season they say is it not earring take oh yeah all the women remove your earrings Let's. we need to carve out very fast never find yourself trying to help god in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help god uza tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue and he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool after he made it into what a molten calf and they said this be thy god O israel which brought thee out of the land so after two years the child doesn't come after praying and praying oh we trust god and then somebody comes to say there's one man who 
It's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there. Me, my heart is near. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a herbalist. It's not exactly. It's not a pastor. It's not a herbalist. But he used to help people. He said, really? Two years ago when they told you, he said, no, 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 no. I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out. And you say, eh, eh. Let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, Let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people and I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship, you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? The guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. The guy say, you said yes. Now, what is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why, as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship. Thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say, answer him now, you say, it's none of your business. If it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before, but Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba, me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects, and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest and he says so what i'm a man you said you're a christian you will not sleep with me i can't you are still my wife but i have to find something to be doing before we get married impatience don't just laugh i hope you are getting the message it's a very serious message impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things someone getting blessed let's hurry up during the waiting period certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them number one is that you have the tendency to get weary especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, 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 the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. 
especially when you are truly obeying the principles there are many of us who have truly been tithing you've truly been giving you've been submitting your prayer request miracle service after miracle service nothing seems to have happened but listen number two your joy begins to fade when weariness sets in your joy like i said earlier on begins to fade number three impatience sets in i'm giving you to it i'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting the tendencies the vulnerabilities number four which is the most dangerous part is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which god has given you options options usually those options are devilish usually those options may even look spiritual but that's not the blueprint of god for your life when jesus met peter look at me when jesus met peter i told him come follow me i will make you a fisher of men is that true but when jesus died just for three days three days peter did not see jesus for three days his patience could not pass 72 hours and in john 21 he said oh boy i go a fishing and the disciples say we go with you in other words let's go back to a, an option that we know something about and when jesus saw him in chapter 15 thereabout he said lovest thou me more than this how many of us have given god options god told you you are going to be a great man of god but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher. It was such an embarrassment to his personality. And he said God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he would be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the Spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will you have not seen them the equation has not lined up if god tells you something 80 percent is still not god you must wait until it looks like god it's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is god whereas it is not of god and so somebody comes and says will you like to be a pastor in our church and they say thank you jesus i knew it you people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure.
because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a cake, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my cake comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you. I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I would prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people would not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have it. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He would give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of... See, the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You're already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I 
I'll never forget. One time when I got an honorarium of 10,000, I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion, that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have lists of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I'll go to pray. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming in the name of Jesus in two months. I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's, listen, if you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long, Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. You are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry. But as it is, I have not yet seen it. Number one, I'm giving you the formula. Brothers and sisters, if you keep this secret, you will survive the process. Between prophecy and manifestation, you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside, there will be a strength that will carry you. Number one, during your waiting period, you should do the following. Recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season. It comforts you to know that your wait is not forever. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there, tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his what? season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute I may not look like it now but my God there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there I will stay through I may not be able to preach now I may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait I choose to wait there is a due season when I will drive the cars 
there is a due season when men will run after me with jobs there is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage there is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building oh yes time and chance happen to them all my turn is coming I know this for sure a day will come I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire a day will come that wedding ring will enter my hand too but meanwhile I wait a day will come I will travel abroad as though I'm walking from my house and going outside I will enter the plane a day will come I will wear the convocation gown a day will come I will finally pass the charm there is a due season the child will come barrenness does not last forever prophesy in one minute shake away unbelief shake away impatience a day will come I will have peace with my husband I know it's a demonic challenge there are ancestral powers causing this family problem but there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family I know but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded I am persuaded I may not see the wind I may not see the cloud it does not look like it will rain but the hand of Jehovah that hand that regulates times and seasons my turn will come I will be on television my turn will come the healing anointing will finally work my time will come when my profiting will appear it's called my season of appearing it's called my season of appearing Hallelujah. Recognize that everything under the sun works by timings. So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen. I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction. And God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and God specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that I cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of God you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira I said I appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what I'm saying so many people have spoken to me Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Jos, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen many men of God today do you know why ministry is killing them although God called them they have opened other seasons for themselves God never spoke to them to start a church they started a church now they are wondering no money no nothing no grace there are many people God told them you are an evangelist they said I need a base so that I will have money as though God cannot finance his work are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, 
even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely. They produce five albums. Not even their immediate environment. No. They, they traveled abroad, took the albums, it didn't sell. Because the season. See, I taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that God is with you. Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. It's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that he has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room. And that one room, it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 
But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while and I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah i have spoken to so many hiv patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy i remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said i now have a ministry and it was she did not even come for the counseling for healing she had so conquered it that for her to live is christ and to die is gain she was focusing on something else yet there is somebody shouting and arguing if the husband does not come in two months lord if i backslide let it be that is your fault are you hearing what i'm saying there are people who have been diagnosed oh you need to go to the hospital brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing his faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point and she says yes lord i thank you i'm alive if i can do nothing i can give god praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred there is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at god we are tired of eating spaghetti in this house my father only pays school fees shame on him at his age he cannot even give me five thousand my father is giving me one thousand you wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to zaria one heavy echo like and prophecy may god be with you and it came and stopped at north gate not having one naira yet they're in 300 level when you see people worshiping koinonia everyone knows the story we can wear suits and fake it but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting so don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship god They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation that I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering. What will my tomorrow be? Me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. 
Every day somebody says I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say please don't mock me. Hold on. Come, see, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. Is sin before God, refusing to acknowledge the things that He has done. Shine on me. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace, shine on me. Hallelujah. You are there complaining. Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were cultists. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor. Remember when we used to sit on the floor. Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Our brothers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years, that God is able. God who sustained my mother without salary, she trained me to school. Where is that God? Where is the God that delivered you? When the doctors concluded about you, when that breast lump grew up, when 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 that when your hair was your hair was falling, where is that God that helped you? Some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace your grace I'm nothing without you grace 
your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never, never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season. Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when, when you count your blessings. Then you balance it up with praise. And see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters. This is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although... Everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work, some of you as you go back right now to your homes, the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life, I've told you, when I would buy bread and cut the bread and put granite uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel. Because I knew that what was in me was greater than the restaurant. Greater than whatever. Can you sing the song he's playing now, Sam? What does the song say? Let's even understand the meaning of the song. So that we know we are singing. Igbo people, what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Very quickly, Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell and let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. 
and that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, all the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options and I will dance before God and say, it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least five or ten minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four, look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing you believe you are getting married start behaving like a married woman not a small girl change switch have the mindset develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering start acting like the person you believe you are going to be develop the mindset you believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire ceo Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an armed robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come, you will do the real one. For sure. Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit seen it in the dream that a day will come he will stand the sun representing his father the moon representing his mother and 11 stars will bow to him but then his life was opposite what his destiny was saying they threw him in the well and he composed himself he said i'm a leader i will learn the language of royalty listen when they sold him for the equivalent of about 13 dollars or so that's the equivalent today. Thirteen dollars. You sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat. They can lie against you. They can scandalize you. That's taking your coat. But it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. They cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. 
while you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, boy, my colleagues have 1 million. Say, nope, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beards were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was stripped. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walked like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only, one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture, in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that. And the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school now you've met with the lady in university and you say even till we die you are still holding on to your past you are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified hallelujah your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future your preparation is your report card your diligent at this level Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, 
Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said, no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see. Look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair. You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness it is a natural thing you must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it that's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic are you getting what i'm saying even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now. All of a sudden. Eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shadrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. We are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Uh, if dropping the money of the institution is all that get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you yes. hallelujah don't spend your time trying to respond to critics you say hey, you have started palming your hair you want all the koinonia guys to see you no problem just continue doing what you are doing and truly they will see you and marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. Yeah, we
all the bruises inflicted by this is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys may not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you'll still form them. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you one million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best student. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very. Good. First Corinthians chapter 4, please. Give us verse 1 and verse 2. Let's talk about just one key here, faithfulness. Say after me, faithfulness. Second Corinthians chapter 4. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. Paul is speaking now. 
and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two he says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and he says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness he says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that have been produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are is a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 
he says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and cobble he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor come pastor femi i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her 
two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it it should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this 
the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one on one it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of God who start in ministry. Everybody they see is their colleague. Take it easy. Move gradually. No, I'm anointed. If not because of condition, don't I have a better revelation than Kenny? And God keeps you there. Say, stay there. I just caught a new revelation. There's nobody to hear you because there is no track record. You can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there. Faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation 
I will make thee ruler over many things. Let's go to 29. 29. For unto everyone that hath, this is a mystery in the kingdom, that when you have, it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what? Abundance of anything. Abundance here doesn't just talk of finance. Abundance of the anointing. Abundance of influence. Abundance of access to revelations. And then it says, but from him that hath, and is not faithful now, he says, even that which he had shall be taken away. It is not only Satan that takes things away. God too takes things away. Are we together now? Not every reduction is caused by demons. There are reductions that are a testimony. It's a report card from God to you that something is wrong with your stewardship. When God increases you, members rise today and mysteriously members just go down. Sometimes it could be that it's a message from God that I trusted you with 30 people and I observed your stewardship. Your stewardship does not merit multiplication. You rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again. It could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship. You rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there. All the people whose voice, who, who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there. It could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship. Are we together? The prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe, wash it. It's a 200 naira trouser, wash it. Are we together now? We live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life. That claps for people for jumping seasons. And as soon as they clap for you, and as frequent as they clap for you, that's the same way they will clap against you. Because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you. You are living a fake life. Go back to the basics. Let me tell you this. Don't ever generalize success. Just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful. Go back and learn the principles. Corporate success is deception. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We are all successful. A day will come, life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values. Whether or not, it's like a defense, the way students do defense. You will need to defend and validate your success. Any door God has not opened for me, I'm not under pressure to go. Because when he opens it, he will open it in honor. Do you know if God does not open a door, your tenacity can force that door to open? That you forced a door and it opened. A man can go around with complimentary cards. I'm a man of God. 
I'm a gospel artist. In fact, you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens. You can go around and out of the 1,000 invitations you beg for, you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase. You see, when you open the door by yourself, you have to keep it open by yourself. But when God opens it, God, when he opens it, he keeps it by his own hand. The hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end. I will not be afraid. There is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end. I will not be. Hallelujah. Years ago, I had a conversation. We're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I say, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. It is not me. It is the laws of God. Whoever will keep these truths, it will work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if you are afraid of yourself, trust his laws. And watch them shock you. And make a wonder out of your life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In a few minutes now, we're going to begin to pray. And many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic. It is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you. There is a system in the kingdom. We make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might. His might, the power of his might, the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water 
challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rent challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah i ah. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life 
not all of you may be trusting God for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting God for one thing or the other I like you to believe there is a way in the sea I bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the Bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand 
that God in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight I bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something God can do about your finances there's something God can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the Red Sea parts and God will rubbish Pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace grant me the grace hallelujah just pray one prayer lord change my story visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry 
in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes lord we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else like you There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Saying you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and words as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name give you your the You are great. 
Nothing, there is no one else, Lord. There is no Every other 
great are the name fade away
say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight i challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of jesus Every song shall be broken. You will the victor's run. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern, Papo Sabalakatopa Shabren Negadea. In the name of Jesus, say after me in the name of Jesus, every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Every Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of god lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What's yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege, at the count of three, that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Pako Seketo Shatariata, Embreke Teke Toka Sata, Shabeke Teleke Tabata. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, anyone here whose life is under siege, be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness. But then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces its barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies its barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of Jesus ah, I tell you all I see is just fire that's what I'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Yes, Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. You truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, sir. You heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold i declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
délai. Alléluia. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the lord is saying i should prophesy to someone it won't read june it won't read june this is what god is saying i don't even know what i'm saying listen god gave you a word god is saying you will not enter june without that miracle happening and in the name of jesus christ whoever that person is i release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of jesus christ let there be a performance i'm seeing i'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing I stretch my hands now by the Spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it, like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself Please help them. Eleven years, no child, madam. Yes. How long? Seven years. Seven years. Yes. Eighteen years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam. Eighteen years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yes. You. Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barren too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, it's someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's what i'm saying you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
My dear, look at me, this lady. The mercy of God needs to speak for you. You, you love Jesus? You love Jesus? I'll pray for you. But you are not in need of a child. What you need is mercy. The mercy of God. Many of us don't know what the mercy of God is. The mercy of God is not for sinners. The mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you. So when we say mercy, it's not just because you have to be a sinner. There are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for. I, I love men. I respect husbands. But many husbands don't love Jesus. They don't know Jesus. After their wives return like this and say, my husband, we just went for a program. They don't know what program. And they cancel out all of these things. It takes two to agree. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, Madam, put your hand in your stomach. I take away this demonic thing. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus, it disappears. Madam, I pray for you. The Lord opens your womb. In the name of Jesus, Madam, by the grace of God, you carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every growth from your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you return with your miracle. Madam, look at me. God is going to use you. Amen. You are not just going to give birth to a child. The hand of God is on your life. It doesn't look like it, but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God. You will love God and serve Him. And with this miracle God is going to give you, every other woman you pray for yes, over the issue of the fruit of the womb, Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will arise and have mercy upon this, my precious sister. In the name of Jesus. The voice of accusation that speaks against you, I silence it by the mystery of the blood. Now go and have your child. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. It's over, my dear. Look at me. Go and prepare. You have a child now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let the grace of God speak for you. Madam, I pray for you. Help her, please. It's over right now. Carry your child in Jesus' name. Please stretch your hands towards the altar. And let's pray. Stretch your hands in one minute. You, for yourself, madam. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's all right, madam. No problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Um, you are trusting God for a child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's sister is going to have twins. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking. For the sake of your sister, carrying twins. This is twins. The Lord himself. There's one more person left. I'm hearing the voice of children, babies, crying. When it stops, then I know that it's over. I'm still, hold on. I'm still hearing it. There is still one more person, family. I'm like I'm hearing the voice of children Lord in the name of Jesus wherever that family is I pray that you locate them right now by the spirit of the living God you locate them right now you locate them right now I'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus, stretch your hands and let's pray. Please begin to pray in one minute and say, Father, whatever I have dropped here, just keep her there, I'll pray for her. That's all right. Begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you. Shalakato prakato impossible situations 
Mabrakato Zadia Shana Hasana Malakatosh Rekete Kete Kebara Hasosia Embrakato Shala Barakatos Kade Brende Kete Kalatos Yata Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come Mabreza Gado Jane Kelando Safria Hasabadash Ingredo Zedeko Shabara Katoski Adabalash Please pray Lord turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let them say among the hidden the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad we sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy Lord I bow my knees to you and I cry visit your people 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 Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there. And the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request i declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of Jesus Christ every impossible situation represented here I cry to the God who is the God of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of Jesus Christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let there be miracles in Jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes I have seen the grace and the glory of God and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have walked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you have handled some level of finances before but I shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ you have experienced favor before but I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare a new order of favor you have had God before but I program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of God. I pray for everyone here, inside and outside. The mantle that causes men to be honorable. May that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. This ministry has never gone up and come down. Never, not once. It keeps going from glory to glory. I declare, let that be the definition of your life from today. Spiritually, financially, academically. For those who are students, I decree and declare, the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. The grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. Anyone here trusting God for a job, a noble job, I stretch my hands. Between now and next miracle service, return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And anyone here due for promotion, I decree and declare by the finger of God, step into a new dimension of promotion. The fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen I pray for you in the name of Jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you I found the calls of your prayer life. I found the calls of your spiritual life. I found the calls of your word life. This is a prayer many people don't desire. I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things. Every kind of arrival mentality. Every kind of spiritual complacency. Where there is no, in, there is no desire to press for the deeper things of God. Satisfied by the little results here and there. I declare that the Lord plants a fresh hunger. The hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I cause it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ And finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of god here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and i want to straighten out my ways with god if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three i'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here i want you to come out right where i am here wherever you are god bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in the name of jesus i move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i appreciate you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the lord for tonight dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.